Shut up and sit down. So it's good to be back in Prudence. Um, yeah, just my happy place. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm like, oh, look at me. Uh, anyway, I packed a lunch because I didn't feel like plugging my fridge in or any of my appliances. Um, this is nice. I think I'll just chill out here for a few hours. I just wanted to take Prudence out, just get her, you know, just see how my foot is driving, which it is good. So that's good. And then just kind of like clean her a little bit and then next weekend I'll be doing a two-day camping trip with the uh, Houston hiking mom uh, women's Houston women's hiking group something anyway there's like 80 of us <laughs> so we're all going to be at a campsite at a state park about an hour north of Houston so I'm about an hour and 20 minutes west of Houston right now at Stephen F. Austin State Park and uh, I haven't done done i haven't been to any of the uh state parks around houston really like ever i mean there's a couple different ones there's like huntsville there's um this one that i'm at there's uh the one i'll go to next weekend which is lake livingston which i guess i'll just include in this video <laughs> i don't know um and then um yeah just kind of explore that and check those off the list and then get out to the uh the bigger ones um so i do have to figure out how i'm going to visit more national parks uh, toward the like later part of this year so I do have to figure out how to get Prudence all the way up out of Texas you know a couple weekends in a row I'll just drive her as far as I can and then uh, just park her at friends houses and then hopefully I can get to like Yellowstone and Grand Tetons and uh, just explore some new states up there like Wyoming and Montana and um, maybe get back down into Colorado and then just kind of make my way back so I can probably make the entire drive from Colorado in like two days healthily healthily in a healthy driving way <laughs> I've done I've driven 18 hours in one day and I would not recommend that do not do that um so but I had to get back and I was in my SUV so it's a little bit easier with the van I'm not going to drive 18 hours in a row I can do maybe like nine hours and then that's it like i'm gonna park sleep um you know refresh and uh it's very dangerous to drive when you're very tired and a lot of people they do that in texas they just think they just have to barrel through and try to get through the whole state in 13 hours and that's where accidents happen and texans texas has the worst <laughs> the worst drivers um, but there are all of these safety rest areas all over the state that you can stay in so I would highly recommend using those and breaking a trip up a little bit. Drive later in the day um, and then, you know, have a good night's sleep and then drive early in the morning. Try not to drive during the middle of the day when it's busiest. Um, use that time to kind of rest somewhere and explore and maybe like get something good to eat and shower and then drive, you know, a little bit later in the day when it's not so busy. So anyway, that's it. Just glad to get out and glad that I'm not on crutches. I don't even have my crutches. They're in my my storage unit with, with my other car right now. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I might be SOL if I if my foot, like, gives out on me. when I, I'm, I'm going to do a hike. I'll probably go about one or two miles. Just do a short hike and then head back, I think. And then, yeah, just kind of take, take her home. <laughs> and then me go to my other home. So, this is good. I can't believe I built this. Like this time last year, I just started traveling in her after I built her in 15 days. And I do like not to toot my own horn, but I do look around and I think, you know what? Like, I don't know how to do any of this before I built her. Like I just watch YouTube and, you know, be proud of your work. Be proud of it. Like you built something and it hasn't fallen apart yet. The ceiling sucks. <laughs> I'm still going to get that fixed. But for the most part, it's like, the, the the amount of adventures you can have you don't have to worry about getting back to a hotel or flying out of an airport or picking up a rental car or being on someone else's time you can just park explore drive and park explore drive park explore and you're just continuously in one like huge amount of momentum 
rather than like having to stop in a city, go see everything within a perimeter and then stay at a hotel and then drive to another city and do the same thing. Like you can go with everything you have wherever you want to go. Like you don't have to worry about finding somewhere to eat because you have a kitchen, you know, and, and this goes for whether you're in an RV or a school bus or a trailer, whatever it is, you have everything with you. It's, it's travel freedom. Like you don't have to wait. I mean, yeah, you can go eat at restaurants and if you can stay at hotels, that's fine once in a while or a unique Airbnb. But you know, if you just want to like, just be free and go where you want to go and not have to worry about backtracking to a hotel or, or, having to get to an airport I don't know I just I love it and there's so much to see in the United States and I cannot wait until I can see more um but yeah so that, that's it it's just it's been a whole year and it's been fantastic so check out my my one year of van life video and there's just some highlights it's not at all everything I mean, there's other videos with everything in it but it's just you know just some of the key moments and uh yeah highly recommend it finally back in regular shoes again which is great um, and my regular shoes happen to be freaking four inch platforms <laughs> so my pedicure lady would scream at me all the time like you should not wear those shoes I'm like dude they're comfortable and I have like really strong legs so I need to have elevation in order for me to like be poised appropriately anyway so I'm in regular clothes and uh, I'm in my regular shoes so this should be good it's good to get out I think they have crawfish I think it's crawfish season it's all crawfish season all the time here um, crawfish is very messy it's basically not bottom feeders but mud bugs I think they call it and I actually went to Baton Rouge right before the lockdown last year or two years ago well two years ago and had uh, crawfish in the crawfish capital of the world which is Baton Rouge Louisiana and that was super yummy um, but they were like, do you want the five pound tray or the 10 pound tray? I'm like, give me the kids menu. I cannot, I mean, this is me eating the kids menu. Cannot eat, what? No, 10 pounds, who the hell eats 10 pounds of crawfish? People do, and hush puppies and all the other stuff that comes with it. So it's not really, I'm not really into fried food and stuff, but crawfish is boiled and then they put seasoning on it. Anyway, enough of that. So yeah, so I'm just a couple minutes from my house and just go, out and about outdoors you know which is good for COVID stay away from from being close to people and that's it so yeah hopefully in a month <laughs> exactly a month I'll be able to run my half marathon in Seminole Canyon so that's the goal I don't know yet because when by the time you see this video there will be an ending that will either be me running or me not running so I don't know you guys know because you guys will find out in the next like parts of the video but I have no idea. <laughs> the magic of YouTube. <laughs> so, all right. Well, anyway, I'm here now. So, yeah, let me just go enjoy it and I'll check with you a bit later, maybe in a couple days when I'm hopefully running again on the treadmill that almost killed me. It is cold and rainy and we're supposed to get some like horrible winter storm again which means it's going to be like below 30. It is late it's about 10 p.m no 9 30 p.m i just checked on prudence at the uh, shop at the storage unit and i'm soaking wet i'm going to go to bucky's bucky uh get some hot chocolate and then head home um but for the next couple days it's supposed to fall be below 30 maybe 35 which is cold for texas <laughs> for houston um, but I need to make sure that I have the Jackery battery just in case my power goes out again. So this time, unlike last year, I'm not going to be, well, living in my van because my van's out here miles from my house. But I will be able to plug things in, keep my phone charged if the power goes out in the next couple of days. So always good. Yeah, in a much better place this year than I was this time last year when we had the big freeze. So anyway, so it's raining. I'm going to head out and get some hot chocolate, maybe some something a bit naughty like a cheeseburger or something I don't know I kind of feel like getting some comfort food some uh, barbecue or something which is in ample supply here all right out I go and the bet I tell you the best decision was getting this storage unit this is like literally the best decision I've ever made so happy and so worth it
Good evening. I am heading to my favorite massage place in Chinatown where the lady will walk on my back. My back has been killing me for about three weeks now, uh, mostly on my right side. Um, I do have like bulging herniated discs and arthritis and all that stuff going on because of my army injury, but uh, I haven't been here in probably about six months, so I'm long overdue for the lady to walk on my back. So if you're ever in Houston, head over to Chinatown, um, which is on Bel Air Boulevard and the 8 Beltway, and there's definitely just the best the best places. I mean, not only that, but after you're done, I'm kind of out of it, but I get to go eat really good like noodle soup, so it's really good. So I'm here now. It's called uh, CNJ Foot Massage, but they do like reflexology. They do the hot stones. I always get the sports massage, um, and so yeah, it's just really good. It's you know, it's normal. It's not like you know, if you want that kind, then go somewhere else. But not, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Um, but yeah, so this is the place. Uh, it's just CNJ Nature Beauty is what it's called. But it's the best, and for fifty bucks you get an hour of massage like I mean it's just phenomenal so I'm gonna go in there now I'm a bit early but yeah so yay I'm gonna have my back realigned so happy about time so that was good I picked up my green tea and some other stuff I'm all you know from <laughs> taking a long one hour nap while the lady just like cracked my back so I had a kink in my um like upper back and it was there for about three weeks so Feels good now. So I don't know what to eat. There's so many choices. We have Vietnamese fast foods. You can get like banh mi, you can get um, some noodles. You can get a uh, spicy hot pot. There's a little strip mall across the street that has a bunch of stuff. And then there's another bigger plaza that's like, like three stories high that has a bunch of other stuff. So I think I'm gonna go across the street and see what they have. I just want so, so, some kind of like pho or like you know soba noodles i think soba noodles i haven't had soba noodles in a while it's really hard to find you have to actually come to chinatown um so like i can get vietnamese food and thai food everywhere in fact my favorite thai place is like a mile from my house and one time this is funny actually one time they um they were so i'm driving now so one time I called up at like, I think I told the story before, I called up at three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday and they said, oh no, we don't deliver until, you know, 5 p.m. So then at 5 p.m. they called me back and said, do you want us to like bring you some food? Yes, <laughs> I do. Thank you. Great. I mean, they know me I, every month. And then like for a while I was traveling and I wasn't ordering any food. And so when I did, they were like, I think in a way they really were saying like, we thought you died, <laughs> but like, it was like, Oh, we're so glad that you're still like alive and living here. And we missed you. I was like, not dead, <laughs> just traveling. So yeah, so I'm going to go, let's see, there's a lot of like Sichuan and Oh, I love it. Oh, I miss Japan. I miss Asia. I went all over China. I've been all over like every country except Myanmar in Asia. And this was like, you know, 16 to 20 years ago was when I was traveling extensively while I lived in Japan. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go across the street. I can find a soba noodle place or like a shabu shabu or something. One that's not like $500, like the one I went to on a date in Austin, the guy paid like $500 for dinner. I could not believe it. I was mortified. I actually still have the receipt. I kept the receipt just to remind me that shabu shabu should be $8 and not 500. Uh, that's a story for another time. That nice person guy was worth like 30 million, but no, no, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm old school and I'm a little more down to earth. So enjoy your money. I'd rather just have a $10 hole in the wall bowl of noodles and call it a day. So there's no parking over here. This is a Sunday night on a holiday. So let's see, we got soul fresh corn dogs. I don't know what that is. We've got uh, Beard Papa's Fresh Natural Cream Puffs. I think these are like, these aren't really Asian. No, there's a Chongqing Chicken Pot, Tiger Sugar, Pepper Lunch. So these are all like fast food places. I think they cater to all the businesses that are around here. Um, I may go to the other place. I don't really, yeah, there's like uh, f fried fish. There's a dessert bar, 10 seconds rice noodle. It's a little too, <laughs> Too quick for me. Soho chicken. Yeah, I don't know any of these. Sapporo ramen. Although, Sapporo ramen. 
if that's Hokkaido ramen with like the corn and spicy miso but I think it's just it's called Ichiko Ichiko Sapporo ramen I don't think it's actually yeah and actually there's like a two-story parking structure and it's full so I'm gonna go <laughs> go to another place there's somewhere else not here ah oh, so many choices okay go forward and uh go forward please thank you <laughs> sorry impatient driver time although it's texas you're not supposed to honk because you'll get shot <laughs> so, oh i look like a mess because i've just been like oh my god you like massage my head so good so good <laughs> So I actually despise tofu, even though I lived in Japan for four years. I think I'm going to do noodles. This one is uh, Kin's Noodle Kitchen. There's also Sichuan noodles and a Korean restaurant. So it's nice because they have the uh, pictures on the outside, so you can just kind of see what you like. Um, it's all really good. And that's a really good thing. Korean barbecue, tofu village. That looks kind of nice. Marinated short rib. Okay, I think I'll go in here. This one looks nice. And I just do, you know, bit of party of one. I'm just kidding. Actually, bim and bop. Okay, I think I've decided on this. So this is the end of an era. I am getting rid of my small storage unit that housed all of my build supplies. And I'm just gonna use the one where Prudence is going to live now. So I'm actually donating all of the remainder supplies to the owners of the storage place who are building their own um, school bus. So hopefully they can use some of these supplies. Let's take a quick look. And then I'm just gonna clean out the trash that's in here and then just leave the rest for them. Okay, so this is all going to trash. This stuff is going home. And this is what I have left. So <laughs> these are all the planks of wood, which at the time were very, very expensive. I have a um, cabinet that is brand new, it's, but it was too big for the van. I have some extra flooring, which is the best floor. Oh my God, I'm so glad I got it. Uh, shiplap, uh, floor pad, some other stuff. I have legs from the Ikea table, which I'm actually, hmm, I'm not sure. So I may actually um, keep some of this stuff or maybe I just leave it all. Yep, so anyway. So yeah, so that's uh, that's what they're getting. So that's probably a couple hundred dollars worth of, of wood here. So hopefully they can use it and, you know, it goes to a good home. So I'm channeling my inner hoarder. <laughs> my car is filled with trash. Yeah, I could never, like, I, I get it. There's people that drive around with like cars filled with trash. I've been driving 42 seconds and I could not drive around with a car full of trash. Anyway, my co-pilot is my porta potty. So there's that too. Okay, so I'm four minutes from my house. Dump all this out in the dumpster and then get on the way. I gotta go to Home Depot and go look at hardware. Okay, so I'm in Casa de Prudence and today's project is to clean out my garage. And this is all the crap that I have in the garage. So my word of advice is everything you buy, have it be cylindrical. It is a lot easier to just shove it in the sides, which is where all of this stuff down here lives on the wheel wells in the garage. So I'm just going to reorganize. And this is my shoe bag that I got from Ikea and I have never opened it. <laughs> so I don't think I need all these shoes. I think I need to just take all the shoes out and use this to put my hiking boots and everything in. Um, but again, it's cylindrical ish. Rectangular, rectangular. So here I've got a hammock chair, a hammock. The blue, light blue one is a tent. Then I have my tarp mat. I have my moonshade, which you can buy in the link in the description. I have yoga mats. I have leveling blocks. 
half a paddle, the other half of the paddle. Um, and then I have um, my fins. This is a table right here. And I have my snorkeling fins. And then I have a hose and a blanket and another tarp, social tarp. Uh, and then chains that are actually for my car. And I don't know why I would have them in the van. They don't even fit. So half of this stuff can probably be taken out. Um, I, I don't really use a lot of it. Uh, I'm not really stationary to really put up things like the awning shade and all that, but I do use it on occasion. And then I'm gonna reorganize this toolbox over here that has my shower and some waterproof stuff. And then over here, I'm going to utilize the edge of my um, bed frame because I have some hooks that I bought and I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to house the um, the telescoping ladder now that I have the roof rack. So I do wanna be able to take the ladder with me. I may just lay it sideways and just um, attach the, um, what is it? Like the hooks on the, the, bed, uh, the bed legs and then uh, that just bungee cord it in. Or I could just have it standing behind the bed really where you can't see it and then just have it attached to the side, which I think this piece of wood here is better than the legs. I just don't wanna like, you know, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing. Anyway, and then eventually when I put the solar panels in, the uh, solar panel box is gonna go here. And this little sachets that you see, those are uh, charcoal bags. I've got probably about 15 or 20 of them uh, interspersed around the van. And I've never ever had any condensation, ever. So climate control, I do a whole video on how to keep climate control. Cause I do live in Texas where it's super humid. And now my van's in uh, enclosed storage. So just a quick heads up before I do a whole video on climate control. In my storage unit, I do have a humidifier right here. And then I do have a big ass fan that I leave running. So I do have electricity. So I leave the fan running. It's turned off right now because it's freezing cold. Um, but basically that keeps the airflow. I do need to open the vent, which I forgot to do when I dropped the van off yesterday. So this is the, um, this is the fan and that just runs continuously. And uh, this is the plug and then this is the dehumidifier. And so far it hasn't filled up. So even though it's been a little humid here and there, summertime, obviously I may need to get a second one. This was expensive, it was about $80, um, but I have warranty on it and um, it's working pretty well so far. So I just keep that running. And this is basically what I have in the storage unit. So obviously my telescoping ladder needs to go in. I took out the plumbing, so I need to figure out later, but those are the jerry cans for the plumbing. My bike is stored here. Um, so I won't be riding my bike from home anymore, which is fine. I'm training for an ultra marathon, stupidly. So, um, but I do have the bike rack here for my car, so I can just, you know, take it back. But so far the storage unit's great. It's kind of like my little shop. Um, but yeah, so these are the shoes that I need to put in that shoe rack. And then I'm just going to kind of reorganize. I don't need to carry everything that I have. I don't need all this crap. And I've been traveling for a year in the van, uh, not full time, but you know, even part time. I don't think I've ever used any of this stuff, really. So I think as I choose different places and spend maybe entire weekends in campgrounds or parks, um, maybe I'll put up a hammock. I don't know. I've got a hammock chair and I've got a hammock. So I would like to attach the hammock chair to the roof up here. But I'm not entirely sure how to do that. And then the ceiling will come down again. I have a better idea on how to do the ceiling and where to put the strapping. It's a little bit difficult in this van because it does curve in and the ceiling is a little arched, but I think I figured it out. So that will come down probably in a couple weeks. But first I'm going to reorganize the garage. The door is very loud. <laughs> and then um, I do want to take this panel off eventually and just put something else there. I'm not sure what yet. I just don't want to do it because I don't want to scratch it up yet. But it's good for putting my insulated window covers. Um, which have been super helpful. And actually these window covers are ironing covers that already have magnets in them. You can get them on Amazon. I think I linked it below, um, but they've been super useful. So yeah, so again, climate control is super important. Um, my, you know, solar box and all that will go here. You can see the insulation kind of peeking through. It's held up pretty well. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to basically just um, reorganize this. And I got to do something with the safe, which I also never open. Well, now you know where the safe is. But anyway, I've never opened it. I do have a key. Um, but I would like to maybe put that somewhere else. 
maybe put it on the other side yeah I think that's what I'll do I don't know we'll figure it out okay so this is how I pack the van so you've got the safe you've got the moonshade um like awning thing and then you have my hammock yoga mat so two pieces of news one I have a new iPhone 13 because Harriet's iPhone 8 uh, is actually being decommissioned by my mobile provider um, so they no longer support 3G so I got a 5G phone for her uh, iPhone 13 mini and I have an iPhone 13 not mini so anyway so now I'm going to try to put the paddle board uh, hoist it to the ceiling <laughs> so we shall see my foot is still also out of commission so we'll see. I saw a couple van lifers in sprinters. Um, sprinters don't play well with Prudence because Prudence isn't a sprinter. She's not as fancy. I'm just kidding. Actually, she's pretty badass. And the fact that I built this all myself exactly a year ago. So that said, I'm gonna try to get this paddle board that's way over in the corner, which has survived and hasn't been knocked over with all the wind that comes through here. I'm gonna try to hoist it to the ceiling using these new um, straps that I got on Amazon and then also put a cover on it. And if it works, then that's what I'm gonna do. If not, I'm gonna to have to find another solution. So, all right, let's try this. It's <laughs> probably the worst thing to buy like the week before I break my foot. So, but yes, foot is okay. I can at least stand and that's all I have to do. My arms work, so fingers crossed. Okay, so it's too awkward to put up on the ceiling, which I have to redo the ceiling anyway, which I've mentioned 8,000 times. Um, I was able to hoist the, or hook the bungee cords, but the bungee cords were way too elastic once I put the uh, paddle board on and it was actually the same level as my bed. So what I can do though, which did work last time, it was just putting it up sideways along the wall, which will block the side door, but that's fine. Um, and then just hoist it up a little bit so I can put my feet under it when I'm sleeping because I do fit exactly right across. Um, so I'm waiting for a sock sleeve that will go over the whole thing. To be honest, I'll probably end up using the um, blow-up paddle board. Um, I would like to try to get something that can like hook on the side and kind of hang down to the side. That might work too. Um, I know they do side uh, surfboard racks. So that might be something to look into because those are pretty, pretty strong up there. Um, it is only 44 pounds, but it feels so much heavier because it's so awkward. Plus I still have a broken foot. So I don't know, I might just leave it here and then in the summertime, if other people are traveling uh, or want to go out to the lakes out here, then I'll just um, get an extra pair of hands. But it's fine. I mean, it was on sale. It was like 50% off, so might as well buy it when I can. Um, but I will use the um, fold-up paddle board, which is way in the corner over there, which is super tiny in comparison to the humonga board. Um, and then that just fits, so I'm hobbling, that just fits in the back on top of the shoe container. The only thing is I just don't like having to pump it up and it does use a lot of energy so but i think it's fine and the telescoping ladder is not really that safe for like standing on and trying to get a gigantic paddleboard up on the roof so i will revisit this when it's not 40 degrees outside um i'm probably not going to be paddleboarding until july anyway and it's going to be out in austin so i've got five months to figure this out hello I'm gonna say that instead of good morning. Um, it is like 7.30 and I'm heading to the VA hospital again, as usual. Um, yeah, so, oh my God, my contact lens. Oh, I got a hair behind it. <laughs> That's the worst is when you have a hair behind your contact lens. Um, so I am going to go to the spinal clinic. Finally, after like freaking 17 years, I'm finally getting a proper, consult so uh, I have like bulging discs in my lower back I've got arthritis down there I've got bulging disc in my neck arthritis there scoliosis whatever's going on with my spine um, so they're going to now consult on um, like long-term care so that would be like massage and acupuncture and chiropractic so uh, this is what this uh, this consult is for. What they had to do is check like all of my other organs and things. So a lot of my 
originally it was thought a lot of my spine injury was due to my abs not closing after I had my daughter, um, which is a condition called diastasis recti, which is very, very common. It's why you still look pregnant after you have a baby. <laughs> and so you can't tell with me, but I can, I can tell that my core is not, you know, solid. So as active as I am, it's still, I wasn't able to close the, the gap after all this time. So basically what that means is that, you know, so they also had to check for hernia and things like that. So now that that's been like figured out and that needs to be taken care of, now what they're gonna do is um, figure out what the, my back, cause it, this puts a ton of pressure on my back and this also exasperates my army injury. Um, and my army injury was um, shattering my pelvis, um, breaking my lower back and busting my neck. So that was fun. <laughs> Um, and so I have, uh, I'm service connected disabled and I have like flex, flexin, like, um, my hip, my thigh, my pelvis, my lower back and my neck are all the like service connected disabilities. And so it doesn't stop me. I mean, I still do all the extreme sports and crazy stuff. Um, but when I wake up in the morning, it's like, I feel like I've been hit by a freight train every single day. It's like Groundhog Day if every morning you're hit by a freight train. <laughs> and so, um, and you just kind of push through it. So by the end of the day, after moving around and stuff, I'm fine. But, you know, I need to get some, you know, I've had this throbbing pain in my back for like a month. And even though I went to the Chinese lady to have her walk on my back, you know, in Chinatown, that was awesome. But now that pain is back. So they need to figure out also, like, I need, you know, so I'm just driving and trying to pay attention to all these people. It's like the shift change at 7 a.m. Um, so I need to, um, I need to figure out, like, uh, like, also whether I need certain pillows or if I need braces, like a back brace or things like that. So that's basically kind of what, um, what I'm doing today. And uh, it's funny to go to physical therapy and orthopedic and um, the spinal clinic without a uh, without an injury to like an ice skating injury. So usually I have some sort of like stupid human trick injury that I'm in here for, but not today. Today I'm just here for me and my spine. So that was a pretty easy appointment. So this is what they gave me. They gave me this uh, heating pad, which plugs in um, the Thermo 4 Freedom 2. I'm not entirely sure what the Freedom 1 did. Uh, this guy over here modeling the hot cold therapy and uh, he doesn't look like he's in any pain. <laughs> he just looks like he wants to go check his phone, but his phone's over on the table and they're making him stand in front of a green screen. And then the TENS machine, which I've used before at a chiropractor. So now I have one at home. And then these are just extra uh, electro pads. So I just put this on my neck and I'm um, sorry for my dusty car. I need to vacuum. Uh, but now that I'm not gonna be in chronic pain, I can now clean and cook and do cartwheels and stuff. So yeah, so that's my haul from the, uh, from the VA this morning. So yay, thank you taxpayers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would rather not have a busted spine, but I do. And so now I just have to figure out what to do about my shoulder. And I have to come back in April and May for um, some consults for acupuncture and chiropractic and massage. So I think I get one massage a month. So that should be good. Hopefully they can do it for like six hours, <laughs> just, you know. Um, and I'll still go to Chinatown and still get my um, my favorite uh, lady to walk on my back there. So anyway, so this is good. So yeah, so this should get me through the day now. Super happy, <laughs> much needed. 
So this is the state of my front seat. So I just have my like little books and things. This is the fan that I keep going when I'm not driving. So this way, um, and I'll do a whole video on climate control. So climate control is super important. So you can see I have these, uh, I have to vacuum under here, but I have these um, charcoal bags and I've probably got 20 of those around. I've got more of them over here. And I have never had any condensation or moisture in the van at all. So that's really good. Um, even just only having the max fan, um, still, even when I'm sleeping in like super cold weather or hot weather, I don't have any, um, I don't have any uh, issues whatsoever. So anyway, so I just took the, uh, well, outside you can see the carpet. So I took the carpet out or the little rug that I have, little outdoor rug that I have inside. And this is my beautiful floor <laughs> that I'm still so proud of that I never see. Um, so I just sweeped, swept, swooped, I uh, just swept that and then I'm going to really kind of clean the front seats, try to scrub in there and then vacuum under here. The good thing about a Nissan is that it actually folds the front seat all the way down. So I know a lot of people, um, you know, they, uh, they do a swivel seat, but I can actually just fold the whole seat down and just sit on the back. And it also has kind of a little tray table. So that's good if I just want to sit on my ottoman, which is outside right now. I also have a humidifier uh, that I leave running. I have electricity so I can leave everything fully running while I'm not here. And then in the back, I just have my toys and things that I need to uh, reorganize. So yeah, so basically I'm just, um, just cleaning for a few hours and then I'm going to take her out for a quick spin. Uh, fill up the gas tank. I always like to have a full tank of gas so when I pick her up for a trip I can just literally just keep going. I need to attach this back up, this little Beatles thing, back up here because it fell down. Because um, you know all you need is love. <laughs> so, And people don't know what this is. If you know what this is, google it. It's uh, LMW28IF. You should know what it is. Anyway, and I've got some extra stickers to put up. So yeah, so just um, just kind of like doing a little bit of housekeeping. Housekeeping. I probably need to get rid of all of these because I'm, I haven't used them and they're all kind of crusty and now they're rusting. But they look cool. <laughs> so, you know, the obligatory van life things that you have to have in your van. So yeah, so that's kind of just my, my uh, chores for the day. And that's it. So if you need any Havelock wool, I have a ton of it back here. Let me go outside here. Hang on a second. I just, uh, and the floor's all dirty. Uh, anyway, I have a ton of Havelock wool because I had to buy extra because stupid Havelock wool decided they weren't going to send me enough. So anyway, I have a bunch in the Houston area. If anyone's interested, I will sell it at cost. No discounts because it's expensive. So there you go. prices are so high I'm just gonna get a car wash right now <laughs> poor man's car wash right here I think they just took off some paint <laughs> all right the car's clean <laughs> it's that time of year again to get my state inspection which costs $25 and you can pretty much go to any pretty much any mechanic and they just check to make sure that you have a gas thing like gas cap and your lights work and your horn works and I think it should take about 10 minutes um, so I need to get that and then I can uh, register my vehicle online for the next year uh, which is very convenient um, so thank you COVID for making everything be online and not have to go stand in the DMV line for hours on end so I'm doing that and then Harriet has a school event at uh, a trampoline park so of course I ran six miles this morning and then now I'm like, I probably should not have run six miles. I probably should have rested all day working, you know, from my home office and then, you know, but it'll be fine. It'll be good to run around. I got her the uh, gigantic Easter egg. I'm gonna hold up right here. Gigantic Easter egg, which she loves chocolate buttons. And so they have chocolate buttons and lots of Easter eggs at the British import store. So this cost me $25. <laughs> so if anyone's in England and you want to help out an expat American, I would 
to me, well, I wouldn't be. I'm British-ish, but I'm American. I've been American my whole life, so I'm not actually not a British expat, but because I sound British. <laughs> so if you would like to send me copious amounts of Easter eggs to Houston, Texas, please do so. Just uh, let me know if you'd like to send me some, and Harry and I would be very appreciative because they're way too expensive here. They're like literally $25 or $30 for an egg.
much right now. I'm not made for this. <laughs> it hurts so I much. I just saw someone float off. They did what? They uh, fell off of there. Oh, they fell off. We got stuck there. Remember we got stuck there like two years ago? Okay, what are we doing? Oh, wait, juggle? You have to juggle five balls. Okay. Wait, you forgot one. What? No. Okay. Oh, you forgot one. <laughs> I don't know if I can juggle five. Like that? Now I can juggle three. Two, two, three. <sighs> I'll need that ball. Okay. Uh, yeah. And we were never going to get out of there? Yeah. Anyway, that's the end of the video.